take one. <laughs> Rev4 is in our, our concept was that we wanted it to be bigger and badder than the Rev2. So the first thing we had to do was give it a bigger number. <laughs> Reb 4 is a pre-compression baler. Uh, up until then, our, our balers were conventional. Not average, not vanilla, but we just wanted to be better. Well, for one baler to be better than another, I'm, I'm sure there's more than just one or two, but the first thing you think about is productivity. What's it gonna do for the customer? How much more productive is this machine going to be over anything else I could buy, whether it's from you or, or someone else? Number one is it'll do more in a day. Pretty much the sole purpose of a baler is to take something that's of large volume to ship and reduce its volume so that you can get more of it transportation-wise from, from point A to point B. So obviously it's how do we get more in a smaller package or more in a multitude of smaller packages in a sh shorter period of time. Our, our Reb 4, even though it is more productive than our Reb 2, uh, they both are offered with the same horsepower power unit. Pretty much use the same amount of electricity. One just produces more in an hour than the other. So it, it's more about uh, concept of delivery or concept of, of uh, throughput. Uh, so, it, so it's really it's really not that I say, okay, well, how much more horsepower do I need? How much bigger does the gallons and, you know, how much more gallons in the power unit is needed? Uh, bigger pump, smaller, it, it, it's more about the concept of how you take the material that's to be bailed or reduced and how you get it into that final package and, and how long it takes you to do that. How we pre-compress in a Reb 4 is we have two articulating doors that pre-compress the material that's above the knife of the charge box. So... Is that a game? Oh yeah, absolutely. Why? Well, because typically without that, you're only compressing a portion of the material that you put into the hopper. So with having the doors, we're taking that extra material, that uh, extra cubic feet of material, pre-compressing it into the area that we're gonna bail it in. So it changes each charge from being one to for even numbers to two. So. So we, we basically increased the displacement of each of the charges uh, by 100%. It was the intent of the design. And I knew that. That, was, that, was, uh, that goal was in mind in the beginning of the design. So equipment similar to this was already in the market. There, there were just... Um, uh, there were just better ways to do it. And I, I presented some concepts to the group and we decided to take on the project. And after doing so, uh, of course, we immediately started the design. We took the order before we had ever designed the piece of equipment. Uh, you were that calm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And there, was, there was never a doubt that the piece, that we could build, design, build, and install that piece of equipment and then it would do exactly what it was we told the customer it would do. We built, designed the machine. Uh, we took it to a trade show. From the trade show, we shipped it to our plant, our facility in Bakersfield. And for three months, we run it through the mill. It was quite an eye opener for a lot of people. I mean, I'm not, I'm not bragging, but uh, I had no doubt in the design to start with. You know, I, I've, I've been a part of uh, designing that type of equipment for many years. I, I knew, I mean, I, 
Well, that's what I do.